This is the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast with Nick Cattles. What's happening? Of course, we are brought to you by Legends, a premium athletic apparel built for the modern athlete, owned by some of your favorite athletes, including number 55 himself, the man, the myth, the legend, Willie McGinnis. Greg, let's jump right into this Jets game from Sunday. It was a win, but I think a lot of people felt like it wasn't necessarily a good win. Explain why. Yeah, I would agree with that, Nick. I just think that Look, it was a sloppy game all around for the Patriots. Their offense, uh, you know, pass protection was a big issue. Execution was a big issue. The de- the run defense was probably worse than it was in week one. And the big thing is, is that they were plus four in turnovers, basically a drive into the second half, and yet they were still – they weren't even close to putting the Jets away. And, and it was really a game until about the midway part of the fourth quarter. And, you know, if you're a good team, if you're in a – if you're a good team in a good place, that should not be the case. They should, they should have dusted the Patriots, uh, the Jets, by the start of the fourth quarter at the latest, and they didn't because they're scuffling right now. You know, I, they're they're scuffling to put things together, and so it was a win. It wasn't a good win, but they're one and one, and now uh, the schedule starts to get a little bit tougher. Yeah, it was a game that I felt like they were in control of for the most part. I never mm-hmm. was necessarily concerned about them losing. Of course, it would have been much easier if they just beat the brakes off of them. And I think it's interesting, you know, Matthew Slater in the post game in the locker room welcomed new members to the congregation, so to speak, uh, after the win. And I think we need to remember that. And I I read your piece after the Jets game about how, you know, you're trying to put the pieces together and it's going to take some time. And I think this team might not have that killer instinct just yet. They're still trying to find themselves on both sides of the football this might be a work in progress. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but a lot of teams go through this kind of thing. And I just can't happen to, you know, gloss over what they did with Tom Brady for 20 years. And I just think Patriots fans are used to this team walking into the season, not being perfect, but looking better, being, you know, more prepared, so to speak, or, or willing to take, you know, advantage of those opportunities they were given by the Jets more often than they were on Sunday. I do think this is mostly a work in progress. Let's talk about the offense. Mm -hmm. Why don't you think this offense has fully got it going yet, especially in the red zone? Yeah, I went back in and looked at uh, at least the TV copy because the NFL game pass is still screwed all the hell up. uh, So we don't have the coaches film yet. And uh, well, luckily that stadium, they have a pretty decent angle where you can see most of what's going on. And I went back and sort of looked at, the, the drives that stalled and tried to pinpoint the reasons. And to me, Nick, um, and this goes to what you were saying uh, about how this is a, this is basically a brand new group, almost universally on offense. It was poor execution and it wasn't the same thing. Every time it was a little bit of everything. I would say that the, the pass protection has uh, been a big disappointment so far, considering that you have four guys when it was in a new spot, but really you have four guys that are, that are back and are veterans and, and have been in the system. And, uh, I thought that they, they struggle when, when I think Josh McDaniels wanted to give Mac Jones time to make a play down the field. He didn't have it just because the Patriots couldn't block it up correctly. I mean, I think that, uh, there were some, issues with there's t- there's some timing issues in the passing game like for example there was a pass in the left flat to James White that was a little bit high he basically got killed on the pass oh, yeah. and it just looked like you know look to the lay person I think it looked like all right that's Mac Jones taking a check down and not really delivering a good pass what I saw on the play and look I could be off but I'm just going off of years watching the Patriots to me that was one of their typical hey, we think we're going to get man-to-man. We're going to have the tight end go out about four yards, basically park himself and get in the way of the linebacker covering the running back. And we've seen this from years. We've seen it with Rob Gronkowski setting the pick, sometimes offensive pass interference. We've seen it with Ryan Izzo, sometimes pass interference. But it's a staple play of theirs. And what happens on that play is Hunter Henry, who's new, who barely had any reps in training camp, probably runs the route about a yard too deep or two, a yard or two too deep. 
And that allowed the linebacker to undercut Hunter Henry and to be in position to make the play. Whereas if they, if they rep that more, if they have better timing, Henry gets in the way and James White's wide open and he's going for about 30 yards down the sideline. So that's what I, that's what I'm talking about in terms of the timing, the execution of the offense. It's just not there right now. And it's a little bit of everything. It's the line, it's the receivers, it's uh, the tight ends. It's Mac Jones at times. It's the running backs picking up pressure. It's just, it's, it's not nearly where it's going to be in about a month's time, but this is what we're talking about. People have to have patience. You can't go back to the Tom Brady Patriots and be like, well, why aren't they doing that? It's a completely different team. You have to erase that from your memory. And everybody's talking about Mac, and we'll get to Mac a little bit later, but everybody's talking about his yards per attempt and those numbers. I think it's a combination of factors, and you just touched on a lot of it, Greg. You know, there was a lot of pressure on Sunday. The Jets were mm-hmm. getting after Mac Jones. The, the, the offensive line protection wasn't good enough. And then I think it's also Mac, you know, he's been told throughout the preseason, he's, he's been taught to take the checkdowns. And I think at times when you start get, taking those checkdowns, especially when you're getting pressured, you might take those checkdowns before you actually look at something that might be available to you. And he, he kind of, you know, you might be able to like fall into that habit a little bit. So he's, and I think he mentioned that after the game talking about, I can hold on to the football longer. I think he's kind of created this habit from time to time of, Oh, all right, here comes the pressure check down, not, not trying to make a play. You know, at times that works well, because if you try to make a play and extend it and Max, not a superior athlete, you can get into trouble. So I, I think he tries to play it a little bit safe, which I would rather have him play it safe than get burnt over and over and over again. Uh, I ask, I want to ask you about two things. First of all, the execution. You had two plays in mind, and you just dialed up the the James White play. And I remember that play because White got shellacked. Yes. A, a lot of people are are going after Josh McDaniels. And when you look at this offense on film, Greg, you think McDaniels has dialed up some nice plays. You mentioned a second and 16 to Nelson Aguilar in this game on Sunday. You mentioned a third and 14 to Jonu Smith on Sunday. So McDaniels is drawing up some nice plays. Is this, again, just execution? And from time to time, you see what's going wrong, and it has nothing to do with the play calling, so to speak. Yeah, first of all, I mean, not even plays that that I highlighted for you. There were a couple draw plays that should have gone for big yardage but just weren't brock, blocked properly. Um, guys either not holding their blocks or you know, get, not getting to the second level, that kind of thing. Um there were two plays, two two long yardage plays. Second and sixteen, uh, Mac Jones passed short left to Nelson Aguilar for two yards. Uh, so this was a uh, sort of like a little screen to the left. And what happened was is that Isaiah Wynn, who had a really rough game and has gotten off to a really rough start this season, uh, it, it, what happens is he's supposed to block down, basically make it look like a running play. And then he's supposed to get out and block the screen. And what happens is he blocks down too hard on the end uh, to fake the run, and he can't get out. And all of a sudden, the guys he, he, he makes the tackle for two yards. Where really, if you look at it, if he makes that block, it's going to go for ten plus yards. And there was a very similar play, third and fourteen. Uh, this was in the red zone. Uh, I forget why they had why were they were in yard long yardage, but. Uh, so it's third and 14. It's basically almost sort of like a middle screen to Johnu Smith. And it's set up basically everybody. I think Johnu's by himself to the left. Everybody's to the right. And basically they're all sort of running verticals to clear out for Johnu Smith. And it, wor- it works perfectly. There's a little bit of pressure on Mac Jones. So he the, the pass is a tad high. Yeah. But really, Jonu Smith should come down with the ball. And if he does, he he I think he has a chance to score a touchdown on that play. He at least picks up the first down. All of a sudden now they're at least first and goal. And so those are the type of plays where just like they're just a little bit off. And I thought they were great play uh, play calls by Josh McDaniels. I thought there were probably a handful of those in this game where you're like, oh well, he has the Jets dialed in pretty good. That was a good call. Uh, I will say give the Jets a little bit of credit. Uh, they did a really nice job sort of slow playing their ends. Uh, that gave the Patriots trouble. Like there, there was that one 
uh, bubble screen to Mac Jones's left where he hesitated and he threw and it only went for about a yard. That was a great play by the cornerback, not going up the field and and sort of making it hard on Mac Jones. So, uh, you know, equal parts, not great execution, but also you have to tip your cap to the Jets because they get paid too. It seems like a number of these things are fixable in due time. And these are kind of correctable mistakes where you you get the film out and you say, all right, Isaiah, you know, don't block so hard on the fake run. Get out there, recover, and make sure you get the block in front of Aguilar so he can pick up some damn yardage. Uh, Same thing with Hunter Henry. Hey, Henry, you know, you ran this a yard or two too deep. Let's make sure you run it a little bit more shallow next time so we open up some space for White. And so I'm not, you know, by any means, you know, punching the panic button. I think there Mm -hmm. are, are simple execution mistakes being made that can be corrected. And I trust this coaching staff. I have to I have to trust Josh McDaniels and Bill Belichick to get it right. Before we move on, I did want to ask you, because you mentioned him, Isaiah Wynn has looked mostly like a dumpster fire through the first mm-hmm. two. Weeks. What the hell is going on? I don't know. It's 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 a good question, Nick. I don't know if it's um, maybe we have overrated him a little bit in the past because he had, I think, what's the stat? I think it's been healthy for 19 of 52 games or something like that. And maybe, yeah. you know, he's He's been able to be good in those short sort of windows that we get to see him. And now with two full games, we're seeing more. I I don't know. He was on the ground a lot in this game. And uh, I, I don't know what to make of it. We all know that right tackle was a, was an issue in this game, that they went from Yasir Durant to Justin Huron to back crap. to Durant. And Durant's terrible. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it wasn't good at right tackle, but like left tackle, like this is a guy that you've picked up his fifth-year option in Isaiah Wynn. So next year he's going to get paid a, a, a big bit of coin picking up that option. And uh, to this point, he just hasn't been very good. And I don't want to say it's like an undersized type of thing because I don't think that's what it is. I think it's just his technique's been a little bit poor, but I do think Wynn is – sort of emblematic of what what you're talking about, Nick, where I think, yes, I said you have to sort of erase your memory of the Tom Brady offense. But, you know, one one thing that I want you to keep in mind, and and you pointed it out well, is if anything, this coaching staff has a track record of improving the team as the season goes along. I mean, we've seen it before. Remember the 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 Monday night massacre in Kansas City when oh. they were two and two. Yeah. Remember what the, you know they went to uh, a couple years ago, 2018, I think it was. They went down to Jacksonville and to Detroit and got shellacked in both places. Started off one and two, and I they ended up winning the Super Bowl that year. And so, yeah, I think I think you combine that the Patriots maybe in hindsight unnecessarily gave too many snaps to Cam Newton in practice and things like that. I'm sure that didn't help. Um, but uh, this this offense will hopefully should get better as the season goes along. They just need a lot more reps, and that includes Isaiah Wynn. He just, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, you got Joe Tooney uh, not there anymore either. So it, it'll be it'll be interesting to see if Wynn figures it out over time. Maybe this is a an Isaiah Wynn island that he's on, and without Tooney, he's got to get used to this a little bit, figure some things out, and, and as the year progresses, he gets better. Uh, we still got to talk about Mac Jones. We still want to talk about these tight ends and wide receivers a little bit, and we want to talk about the run defense. Let's talk about Mac Jones. Your thoughts on his day? Uh, I thought he was um, okay at best in this game, uh, and I thought he was. I thought he was much better in the first game. Uh, I will say that I think, I think it was sort of dependent on the defense. Like I think in the first game the Dolphins, the pressure that they brought, that he was able to see it, that they went shotgun spread and Mac could sort of pick and choose what he wanted to do, I thought was really effective for him. And uh, this game with the, with the, the, I keep wanting to say the 49ers because I think Robert Sala and I think, I think 49ers, Uh, but the, (laughs) the, the Jets run I mean, it's the same scheme. The Jets ran a lot of you know, zone and, and they changed some things up and, and presented some problems. And so I think it was tough for Mac Jones to really get a read, but you know, then again, the pressure had a lot to do with it. I mean, I only had Mac for uh, two positive plays. One was his run block, which was ugly and Tom Brady esque, but it got yep. the job done. Yep. Uh, I thought the only positive throw that I had for him was a 
24 yarder to Jacoby Myers. That was over the, over the top, over the shoulder again. Uh, but you know, he had a couple of tough throws. He had the grounding penalty. Uh, you know, he had the fumble that didn't count, but still you can't be putting the ball on the ground. That's, that's twice in two weeks. And so I thought it was a, a learning experience for him and, uh, you know, not great, but look, it was, it wasn't what Zach Wilson did. That's for sure. And so, you know, that's, you can take something from that. Yeah. And I think it's only fair when we talk about this offense, trying to find itself, obviously Mac is a pivotal part of that. And if you don't expect a guy to have some ebbs and flows during his rookie season, then I think that's somewhat unreasonable. We've seen rookie seasons, you know, Justin Herbert, here's the thing. People have to look back at the history of rookie quarterback seasons. And, mm -hmm. you know, the top four or five rookie quarterback seasons have not necessarily been spectacular. They've been good. You can talk about Dak Prescott. You can talk about Baker Mayfield. You can talk about maybe Russell Wilson. But you're looking at, you know, 22, 23 touchdowns and about 11, 12 picks. You know, nothing spectacular. Here's what happened. Justin Herbert had... I think the best rookie season that a quarterback has had in the league. I mean, don't forget about it. Lamar Jackson came in halfway through the season, his rookie season. His MVP season was not his rookie year. Patrick mm -hmm. Mahomes sat for a year behind Alex Smith before he got out there and played. I'm talking about a guy straight out of the draft and walks into the NFL. You could argue that Herbert had the best rookie season we've ever seen from a quarterback. So now I think everybody is kind of stacking up this class to what Herbert did last year, which I'm not sure is reasonable. Because that season last year Herbert had was an anomaly. Usually what you see is some ups and downs, especially early in the season. And, and I think, you know, that, that's part of Mac's story. I think the offensive line issues are also a big part of the story. I, I'm not concerned at all about him. I, I think you will see some of these hiccups, but you also see some of these, you know, nice throws like the Jacoby Myers where he checks it and, and, and makes an unbelievable bucket throw. So I, I think he'll be fine. Your thoughts mm -hmm. about the tight ends and the wide receivers, Greg. What's jumping out to you when you watch the film? Yeah, I see a group um, of the new guys. I mean, look, Jacoby Myers is Jacoby Myers, and he knows what he's doing, and you could tell. I, I Just contrast what Jacoby does and how he looks on the field to Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, Hunter Henry, Johnny Smith. I, I see those four guys. They're not playing fast. They're just – they are thinking their way through things, and – that's no way to play offense. And so that's not going to help Mac Jones out. And again, that's another thing that's going to be better in the second half of the season. And so uh, I, I think that's that's going to be one of the big things on the coaching staff is how to get these guys to play better. And really, Nick, that only comes with playing more and more together and seeing more on defense. Uh, you know, when they go out for a pass pattern, how's the defense doing? How did I react? then watching the film, making the corrections, going out on the practice field and doing that. That just takes – that's going to take time week after week doing that, and, and they're just not at that point yet. And I think it's unrealistic uh, to be there, but I think that's another sort of example of how this team is going to get better. People just have to be patient. It's just – you just – you have to be. And patience is not a strong suit for New England fans and people from no. New England, as we both know. So, uh, you know, it, it, I, I feel like we talked about this last year when the team was, you know, not nearly as good and there were issues. And of course, they had the seven, nine finish. Everything is being stacked up to the Brady years. Everything is going to be stacked mm -hmm. up, to, you know, three, four, five years. And I think we've got to look at this as tough as it is, because, you know, in this debate world, everybody wants to go back and forth and still deliberate about Brady and Belichick, which makes my stomach sick. But, you know, you've got to look at this as an individual team now. You know, this we talked about it during the offseason. Yes, they went out and they spent a lot of money, which we both thought what Belichick needed to do, given the, the state of the roster. But when you spend the money and you bring in a bunch of new dudes, guess what? You're bringing in a bunch of new dudes and they've got to figure out how to play with each other in the offense and all in the timing of it and the execution. It's not going to look like a polished, finished product. In week two, it's just not going to. Speaking of not polished and finished, holy crap, Greg, this run defense stinks out <laughs> loud right now. What's happening up front? It's bad, Nick. It, it, it really is. And, you know, some of it you want to put on, all right, unfamiliarity with like Devon Godchow and 
um, you know, Barnmore being out there, but it's, it's, it's everybody. It's, it's, it's similar to offense, Nick, where with the Patriots offense, where look, these guys need reps together. They need to get on the same page, but I mean, you know, you'd like to see guys like God Chow and guy. I thought guy was better in this game. Yeah. He made that um, red area. He, he was good. Yeah, and yeah, that third and goal, that was a nice play. That was a Lawrence guy play that we're used to seeing. So that was promising. But I mean, I had the whole defense for about 10 blown gaps in this game, Ugh. which is them just getting either shoved out of it or going in the wrong one. And and it's just it's it's very disjointed. Um, Godchow's been a big disappointment so far. I mean, look, even you know, Matthew Judon had a big second half, but even he had some issues on the edge. Uh, with the run and also containing the pass rush and and you know I thought Bentley Bentley made some really good plays in this game but he also had a lot of rough plays where you know he's just in the wrong gap and guys are running through and running free and and Nick the thing that's uh, disturbing is you're talking about two opponents in the Dolphins and the Jets who really aren't that good on offense on the offensive line yeah and if they're having these issues, what are they going to do against the Saints, who have some high-priced guys in the offensive line? The Bucks, of course, have some really good players on their offensive line. I mean, even though I think they've always been a little bit overrated, but there's those two lines are certainly a step up from what the Patriots have played the first two weeks. And so, look, I think the onus is on the coaching staff. They need to get this stuff cleaned up. And, you know, if Godchow's not getting the job done, put Carl Davis out there. Like they need to figure out what personnel they're going to run. And, you know, I, it doesn't exactly, I'm sure we'll get into it a little bit more, but it doesn't exactly uh, bring a lot of confidence that you bring a guy off the practice squad like to Sean Bauer and he's playing a ton of snaps early and Josh Uche's standing there on the sidelines picking his rear end. And so I, I just think they have a lot to figure out up front. And until they get figured out, I think this team's going to have trouble uh, pulling away from a lot of opponents, just like they have in the first two weeks. Look, I don't think the run defense has been good. As I said, it, it has stunk out loud. But how much credit do you give to the looks in that first half specifically? It looked like the Patriots decided to play a lot of coverage against Zach Wilson and you know force him to kind of be patient. And then eventually the, in, the inner clock was going to start working and he was going to you know make a play that he would regret. So how much of the run defense, I I don't want to say by design, because you don't walk in and go, hey, let's give up a bunch of run yardage. But how much was it them playing coverage and not necessarily being aggressive up front and allowing Wilson to make some of those mistakes? Yeah, I mean, I I can see that. I mean, the Jets went a lot with with a lot of two tight end looks. And so that involved, um, you know, Duggar and Phillips being out there. But really, especially most of the game, uh, until it got into doubt and the Jets had to throw the ball. The Patriots were putting out a lot of three-man lines. They brought out three defensive linemen. They'd have Hightower on one edge. They'd have Judon on the other. They'd have Bentley at, at linebacker, and they'd bring Duggar into the box. I don't think that's going very light. It's not like they were they were backing up and just like, oh, look, we're just going to give you the underneath stuff. I, they still defended the run. I just think they did it really, really poorly. Again, and I, you know, when you're putting three defensive linemen out there, and that includes, I guess, Dietrich Wise, because this is going to be a thing, apparently. (laughs) uh, You know, they're they're going to need to play better. They you 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 expect to play the run, and probably Nick, the Patriots probably made that decision because they were like, this Jets offensive line is awful. They got George Fan at left tackle. They got whoever at right tackle. Like I don't even know who's on the inside. They're so bad. So we can go light because we're gonna we're gonna win at the point of attack. And guess what? They lost. They lost big time. Yeah. And and against a better opponent, against a better quarterback, they don't get four interceptions. That play up front might have decided this game. All right. One uh, one more thing before we move on to three up, three down. Talk about some of this Patriots uh, defensive pressure they created late in this game. Bauer playing as much as he did, especially over Uche. <sighs> Why? I the the only thing Nick that I can I can think of is like because the the role that they had him out there it's uh it's the, the his length and his ability supposedly to play the edge uh 
against the run. And they just think for whatever reason, they think Josh Uche is not good enough, even though he is a little bit undersized, but he has longer arms and I just don't get it. I mean, I know a lot of like Judon, a lot of, uh, Uche's production in this game came in the second half when the the you know the score was uh, helping the Patriots defense. It allowed them to pin their ears back a little bit more. But look, I I just I I don't understand it. This guy just got elevated from the practice squad. Josh Uche's been out there the whole time, all during training camp. I look. I sometimes you need to go with the younger kid, and and you drafted him there, play him what have you, I just don't understand it. And, and this game going back and watching the film, I mean, I had, I had Uche for one, two, three, four, five, six. I I mean, I'm even running out. Like I ran out of space in the second half, 10 plus plays for Josh Uche in this game. And Tashawn Bauer had zero and one minus play with an edge. So like, what the hell are we doing here? Stop getting so cute with the personnel and, oh, I need Dietrich Wise and his arm length and Bauer and his arm length. It just just play guys who are going to make plays. I know Uche is going to make plays. That's all he's done since he's gotten here. Just give him a chance. I'm just I'm getting sick of watching some of this stuff. And you wonder, we also have to include the idea that, you know, Kyle Van Noy was not out there. So, you know, maybe yeah. Van Noy, especially when we talk about the run defense and setting the edge and all that stuff. You know, before we got into this season, we talked about Judon Van Noy and their ability to help against the run, well, you were missing one of those pieces. So it's it's fair to bring that up. Not to say that Van Noy would have been the difference maker and the run defense would have been spectacular, but it, it's only fair to bring up that they, they did miss him, I think, uh, in this game on Sunday. All right, before we move on with three up, three down, I'm going to tell you about Legends. I mean, Legends is the premium athletic apparel company that we've been talking about over the last few weeks on this podcast. Just great stuff. You know, the hoodie is light enough where it doesn't weigh you down if you're working out, doesn't get all sweaty and messy. And also, if you're, it's a hot day, you're working outside or whatever, I think the stuff, the T-shirt they have and the vented shorts, as Greg has talked about, I mean, those are the cooler options. So you can work out, you can do things and not feel like you're going to die of sweating and, and heat. So check out legends.com. It's, it's premium stuff. Uh, Greg, tell them all about it. Hey, Patriots fans, when I say the name Willie McGinnis, what word comes to mind? Defense champion? What about Willie McGinnis? What about legend? Well, add to that list entrepreneur because number 55 is one of several athletes who are investors and owners in the athletic apparel brand Legends. That's right. Willie, along with guys like Steve Nash, Baker Mayfield, Matt Barnes, former Celtic Marcus Morris, and even entertainment icon Quavo, are just a few of the names building legends into the hottest apparel brand in the market. Visit, visit legends.com today to shop the latest trends in athletic apparel from shorts, tees, hoodies, and more, and save 20% when you use our code PATS20. That's legends.com and promo code PATS20. Offer ends October 10th. And Nick, I got to tell you, I put the, I had the shorts on yesterday yep. and I was, uh, I was very impressed. Like, you know, I, I'm a guy who likes comfort and these, these are more of the, uh, athletic type shorts. And what I really thought was cool is that they basically had almost like the underwear built in yeah. to the, the, the shorts and like, they were a really nice fabric. They were really comfortable. The shorts were really comfortable. Um, you know, my kids for, at first, when they saw them, they're like, I don't know, dad, I don't know if those are your style, but then I had them on yesterday and they were like, those look pretty cool. Even on me, they look cool. So make sure you go to legends.com, check out all the stuff they have, save 20%. I mean, 20%, that's that's a good chunk of coin. And I also saw that they're running a free shipping special if you order enough stuff. Uh, use our code PATS20. That's legend.com, promo code PATS20. Offer ends October 10th, so get on it. All right, we got some more stuff to quickly run through here. I want your three up and three down, Greg. Let's start with the uh, three up. Uh, three up. I'm looking, uh, James, J- James White, uh, is my number one. I just yeah, thought that James White looked like James White from a few years ago. It was awesome to see. I know it was, it, it was, it was tremendous. I thought that, uh, you know, he, he brought a calming influence to the offense and, and look, uh, I'll just say it right here. Cause I know I already heard this after the game from the blue community, the, the, the losers that just wait and they're like, <laughs> they wait on the game and they're like, Oh, what take did you have like three months ago? 
did did I have James White on my early versions of the 53 getting traded or released? Yes, I did. And I do not take that back for one second because that's what was on film last year. James White was a free agent, got exactly zero offers from anybody else, which tells you what his film was. And early on in camp, he did not get off to a good start. But he earned what he got, which was he turned it around. And since about the midway point of training camp, he has been the old James White, and we saw it in the game today. I do not, I do not regret what I said before. I don't take it back. I stand by it. White was not good when I put that. He's better now, and he was great on Sunday. Who's your number two guy? Uh, I went with Damian, Damian Harris. We'll stay in the backfield. I thought he was tremendous. His touchdown run was, you know, awesome. Uh, I had him for breaking five tackles on that one play. I think I had him for seven broken tackles overall in the game. I thought he he obviously learned from his fumble the week before, wanted to sort of atone for that, and I thought he did just, just on that one play. Yeah, I thought, I mean, that touchdown run was just tremendous. Uh, your third and final up for this game. Josh Uche. Play the dude. Play the kid. <laughs> play him. Play him. <laughs> I mean, 10 positive plays like I had him for. All right. He had a couple of if he plays against the gap and, and and on the edge. But dude, this defense needs playmakers. The kid is a playmaker. He's fast. They need more speed in the front seven. We talked about that last week about how they look slow. Play faster. Put the kid out there. Let's go to the down category. Uh, I, I could probably guess some of these names given your earlier comments. But who's your first down? Uh, I'm gonna. St- I'm just gonna say right tackle overall uh, between Durant and Haran. I, I didn't think. Uh, I didn't think either of them were very good in this game, and uh, that's going to need to be a lot better. Next, Isaiah Wynn. Uh, yeah. Just, it's not. It's not good enough. Not for left tackle in this league, and and against a team that really doesn't have that great of edge players. You look. We knew. We we talked about it last week. The tougher matchup was going to be at right tackle against Jonathan Franklin Myers, and that did play out, but that means that the left tackle needs to clean up, and and, and Josh McDaniels obviously thinks that Isaiah Wynn and his athletic ability can be an asset in the screen game with the receivers and the running backs and, and, he just, and the draws, and he just wasn't executing well enough. Another part of that story, since we've got two on the offensive line there in the down category, which I would agree with, you know, another part of the conversation, if in time this offensive line continues to disappoint us, let's not forget, you know, the offensive line was mostly a two-man operation last year from a coaching standpoint, and one of those two are gone now. So, you know, that might be something to keep an eye on. Your last person on your down list, Greg. Yeah, I keep going back and forth on this, Nick. Um, I'll just tell you some of the people that are in – in the running, uh, Jawan Bentley, he had a, a plenty of plus plays. He also had a bunch of minus plays. Uh, I think that, you know, Dietrich Wise didn't do much in this game again because guess why? Because he's play, being played out of position, just like we've been talking about for three years now. Um, I think Godshaw had a, had a tough time. Um, no one was really brutal in this game, Nick. Um, so I, I think I'm going to go... I think I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Godshaw just because of the run defense and that's what he was paid for and he's not he's not holding up well enough so um he's my number one guy that has to be better next week. And Bentley's going to be somewhat of a polarizing guy cuz I saw a lot of reaction on Twitter saying he was playing really well and he made plays and you know in, in your in your eyes watching the film he also had some uh, mistakes that could catch up. So uh interesting. Yeah, it was like 50-50 for him. It was 50, you know. 50% good plays, 50% bad plays. You, you know, obviously you'd like him to be a little bit more consistent. Are you buying or selling the Patriots pressure we saw on Sunday in that second half? Um, I'm not ready to buy yet. I'm not saying I'm selling, but I'm not buying because you should do that. When the score gets out of whack, you should be against a crappy line and a rookie quarterback. Um, and by the way, one thing before, before we get going, one thing I wanted to say, the first two interceptions I did not put on Zach Wilson. I thought that... Corey Davis, who is a guy that a lot of Patriots fans wanted the Patriots to go after in free agency, I thought that he stopped running on his on the first route where if he kept going across, which I think what Zach Wilson wanted, but all of a sudden he realized that 
that Corey Davis was stopping and there was pressure coming and Zach Wilson, there wasn't really anything else he could do. So we tried to give him a chance and it just didn't work out. I thought that was a poor route. I thought the, I thought the second one, Zach Wilson thought that Corey Davis was going to flatten out and go to the sideline. Instead, he came back towards Zach Wilson and that's why the throw was a touch high and went off Davis's hands. So uh, I just wanted to point that out. But as far as the pressure, uh, I want to see them put pressure on when the, the when the game's in doubt uh, or when the game we're not sure who's going to win when the game's over in the second half fourth quarter anybody can put pressure on them. All right, let's jump to the BostonSportsJournal.com member question of the day thirty nine ninety nine on their annual plan. Of course, if you're listening to this, you're a Pat's junkie, which means a membership at BSJ gives you access to a ton of video analysis Bedard does on the coach's film and direct access to him in weekly chats. Budman326, Greg asks, is win a sneaky draft day bust? Uh, I never used the, the the term bust and that the Patriots picked up his fifth-year option um, would lend you to believe that he's not. Uh, but I will say this. I would say he's more in the Sony Michelle category than anything, which is, you know, is he a good serviceable pro? Yeah. Uh, is he exactly a first round talent in terms of what he's put out there in, you know, 21 games out of what 54 now? Um, I would probably say not. So I, I don't think he's a bust, but this is a big year for him. I mean, they, you know, he, he, he needs to stay on the field. He needs to play a lot better than he has to this point in the season. Um, or else we will start having those conversations, those same conversations that we had about Sonny Michelle. We'll be having about Isaiah Wynn. It's not a good start to the season for him, but, um, you know, like we said, and this goes for the team as a whole, uh, they need to be making a lot of improvement as the season goes along. And, and I expect Wynn to get better. I've always thought he's, a, he's a solid player, but we'll have to see how he does the rest of the year. Jets officially in the rearview mirror coming up next. We got the New Orleans Saints after week one. You thought mm, that's going to be a tough one after this past weekend. You're thinking mm, maybe this won't be so tough. We'll uh, preview that game coming up. Famous Jameis, famous Jameis <laughs> showing his face against the Patriots this week. Until then, he's Greg. I'm Nick. Till next time, be good. We'll talk to you.